excited because this is Bible in a Year, day 166, 167 of 365. Right now we did, at 7 o'clock this morning, we did 164, 165. And right now we are doing Bible in a Year, 166, 167. So, so excited to have all of you here. So excited that God is helping me get back on track, helping me to be focused, helping me to be on time, helping me to be uh, getting through my Bible readings. I have now gotten all the way to June 16. When I woke up this morning, I still needed to do 13, 14, 15, and 16. So we've done four days worth of reading. Here we are for the second live. I'm excited to be back on track, moving, and... I'm just going to keep on chipping away at it and praying for God to give me the time, the strength, the energy. Please be praying for me. I need all of the prayers that I can get. When you're trying to do God's work, there's definitely a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that go on in life that oh, are disappointing, heartbreaking, you name it, whatever you want to call it. Um. There's just a lot of things going on in life that are going to always try to distract us from spending time in God's Word. There are a lot of things going on in life that will try to take us away from the commitments that we've made to God. Um, so I, uh, I'm i just so happy to be doing uh, Bible in a Year Day 166, 167. Let's take a look at what it is. And I'm going to be definitely keeping this live quite a bit shorter than the one this morning. So I'm going to be making shorter and fewer comments on things but first kings 14 1 all the way through 17 24 acts 10 all the way through the chapter to verse 48 psalm 133 and 134 proverbs 17 7 through 11 7 11 okay we got eric in the house we got marco in the house <laughs> melissa rydell whoa you're here so if you're following along with me, we are doing the readings for June 15 and 16. This is day uh, 166, 167 of 365. So excited to be getting in two lives today for a total of four days worth of readings. Um, I really do want to get caught up, um, and today is just a really great start on that already. So please continue to pray for me as I am... Um, working on completing this Bible in a Year reading challenge and doing lives for all of the days. I can't believe that when we're done, there's literally going to be a live for every reading that we've done for the entire 365-day year. That is crazy. Um, so praise God. Uh, I can't even think about all of the hours of time and video that that is and reading and preparation and everything that goes into doing the Bible in a Year reading challenge. But what I can say is, is spending time in prayer, spending time in God's Word, spending time together, um, lifting up Christ is something that brings me joy in my heart, even when I'm going through crazy stuff in my life. It doesn't matter what's happening in life. It doesn't matter whether you're going through disappointment, heartbreak, pain, um, financial troubles, health issues, whatever. Jesus, if you put your heart in His hands... He can always give you the strength to go through the valley of the shadow of death. Whatever it is that you're facing, hey, it still hurts. Um, emotions, negative emotions are never fun. But, praise God from whom all blessings flow. We can take our heart to Jesus. We can spend time with Jesus. Jesus will always listen to us. He will always be our friend. He will always be there. All right. Uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and pray. We're going to dive into days 166, 167 of our Bible in a Year reading challenge. So excited. Heavenly Father, thank you for getting me here on time and helping me to get the readings done and helping me to see some things in your word that I can share with our Bible in a Year challenge reading community. Um, Lord, be with me now. Anoint my mouth. Anoint my mind. Anoint my heart. Help me to rise above my own personal life and to... Continue to be strong for you, um, sharing your word with others, pointing people to Jesus, because Lord, no matter what happens in our life, as long as we have you, we have hope and we have eternal life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And we want to thank you for being a part of our lives and for giving us courage and for giving us strength and for giving us hope. In Jesus' name, amen. 
All right, well, I'm so happy that all of you are here. We got Naomi, Natasha, Lynn Rydell, Stephen Lopez in the house, Marco, my man, and Grace, Faith, Hope. Tamara, you're here. <laughs> Praise God. Well, we are back on track. I am doing, uh, if, if you're looking at the Bible in a Year reading challenge online, so if you go to my Facebook page, or not my Facebook, if you go to my Instagram and you go to the link tree link in my bio, there you can see the 8.5 by 11 or the um, 11 by 17 Bible in a Year reading challenge, and you will find the readings that we are doing for today, uh, June 15 and 16 are the readings that I'm doing right now. Uh, this morning we did 13 and 14, now we're doing 15 and 16, which is day 166, 167 respectively. So... That means today we will have done the Bible in a Year uh, Challenge Instagram Live for days 164 through 167. So happy that God is helping me to persevere, to get caught up on the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge and on the Instagram Lives. Glad that you guys are joining me. Here we go. Okay. In 1 Kings chapter 14, if you did the reading already, you'll know, starting in verse 1, we see that Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise and disguise yourself, that it may not be known that you are the wife of Jeroboam. And go to Shiloh, behold, Ahijah the prophet is there, who said of me that I should be king over this people. Take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what shall happen to the child. Now, this is the crazy thing, because she goes and she tries to disguise herself. He doesn't want the prophet to know that it's Jeroboam's wife. Why? Because Jeroboam has been sinning against the Lord. And uh, this is what the prophet says to his wife. Go tell Jeroboam in verse 7, 1 Kings 14, verse 7. Go tell Jeroboam, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, because I exalted you from among the people and made you leader over my people Israel and tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. And yet you have not been like my servant David who kept my commandments and followed me with all of his heart, doing only that which is right in my eyes. But you have done evil above all who were before you and have gone and made for yourself other gods and metal images, provoking me to anger, and have cast me behind your back. Friends, I'm going to say something I have said over and over and over and over again on the Bible in a Year reading challenge. We can't keep worshipping the idols of this world and expect God to bless us over those who are being punished. God punished the people who were in the land of Israel for idol worship, for child sacrifices, for all kinds of things. And what has happened here is that God raised Jeroboam to sit on the throne that he had promised to David over ten of the tribes of Israel. The only tribes of Israel that he did not have were Judah and Benjamin. And he took that as an opportunity to raise up idols, to, to, to have people, uh, according to his own thoughts, worship two golden calves just like they had done in the wilderness at, um, at Mount Sinai when they were given the commandments. God rose Jeroboam up to the throne and he took him off the throne as a result of his sin. Friends, God is the one who gives people power. God is the one who gives people influence, and he gives power and influence to those who love the Lord their God with all their heart, their mind, and their soul, having no other gods before them, and love their neighbor as themselves. If we want to be like a King David, and, 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 and I'm not saying King David was perfect, but if we want to be like a King David, if we want to be a son or a daughter of the God, living God, we can't be saying to ourselves, let me go ahead and make my own rules, let me go ahead and worship my own idols, let me just go ahead and cheat on God. Like, listen, friends, it's so simple. God is not going to bless you uh, if you're going to do the same wicked things that the people who he, who, who he is punishing are doing. So if we're living according to the kingdoms of this world and, and we're doing the things of this world and then we're being like, God, why aren't you blessing me? Hello? Like, would God be fair to punish the wicked, right? And then you to do the same wicked things that the wicked are doing and then be like, well, God... I attend church on Saturday and I pay my tithes so you could bless me. No, 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 no. Friends, we don't buy the Holy Spirit. We don't bargain with God to bless us by just like, you know, hey, God, let me have a check 
check uh, list relationship with you. Check, check, check. Like, okay, I'll go to church. I'll pay my tithe. Okay, I did my morning devotional. But I'm, I'm living a wicked life. I, I'm living in the flesh. I'm not living according to the Spirit. And I'm expecting God to bless me anyway. God is not going to bless you if you are going to use that blessing in selfish ways. If you are going to follow the, 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 principality, the powers and the principalities of this world and the politics of this world, and you're going to say, you know what, God? I can do whatever I want. I'm going to decide what's good and evil. I'm going to do my own thing. I don't need to follow your word. Then how can you expect God to bless you? How would it be fair for God to punish the wicked and then bless you just because you say you believe in Jesus, but you're doing the same wicked things that the wicked people are doing? And this is exactly what's happening here in 1 Kings chapter 14. The prophet is saying to Jeroboam's wife, hey, you go tell your husband that you have exalted other gods over the one true God, the I am, the one who brought the, the children of Israel out of the house of slavery, out of the land of Egypt, took them across the Red Sea, brought them across the wilderness, brought them into their own land, drove out the wicked people, and now you are worshiping the gods of the evil people that God cast out for being wicked and for worshiping other gods. What do you think is going to happen to you? How can we call God love? How can we call God good, just, and fair? If we're doing the wicked that the other people are doing and then expecting God to bless us, even though the wicked have been punished for doing the very thing we're doing. Come on, friends. Like, this isn't rocket science. And so basically the rest of our, um, our reading all the way from um, 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 1, all the way through 1724 is a long list of kings. Here, let me see. Um, Jeroboam dies. Okay, then Rehoboam comes in. And guess what? Uh, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins um, that they committed more than all of their fathers had done before them. For they also built for themselves high places and pillars and ashram on every high and hill and under every green tree. And there were also male cult prostitutes in the land. Okay. Next king, doing wicked in the sight of the Lord. Okay. And then uh, Abijam reigns in Judah. And he walked in all the sins of that his father did before him, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God. And he was taken out of his position of power. And then finally, Asa reigns in Judah in 1 Kings 15, verse 9, and he actually is faithful to God, and he ends up reigning a, a much longer term, and the land is much more blessed, um, and, he, and he mostly gets rid of all of the evil in the land, not completely. But then Nadab reigns in Israel, and guess what? He does evil. And then um, Basha, uh, right there at the end of uh, 1 Kings 15, verse 34. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he walked in the way of Jeroboam in his sin, which he made Israel sin. Friends, over and over and over and over again, God is allowing people to, as to, uh, to ascend to the throne. They're witnessing the people before them doing the wicked, worshiping the false gods, bringing in all of these influences of the evil nations that have been driven out before them, and yet... They continue to sin against God, and yet they continue to do the same wicked things that King Solomon did that caused him to lose the throne, that King Jeroboam did that caused him to lose the throne. Friends, I want to tell you something. If you will just repent, turn to Jesus, and ask him, Lord, will you make that new covenant promise in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34 true in my life? Will you write the word of God on my heart? Will you write the law of God on my heart and my mind so that I love to do what the Lord my God wants me to do? Because remember, David, even though he was not a perfect man, he was a king who loved God's law. He loved the law of God. He says, listen, I get it. Commandments 1 through 4, love God. Commandments 5 through 10, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Like, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 5 through 10. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, the other six commandments. Um... So, friends, are you picking up what I'm putting down here? I'm literally telling you. It's very simple. God wants to bless you. But he can't bless you if you're being selfish and wicked. Because the law of God is simply fulfilled by loving God back. It's like accepting the free gift of eternal life that Jesus Christ has made possible. For God so loved the world, the Father, God the Father, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Friends, it's really easy. God is literally giving you a golden ticket 
He's saying, listen, I just want to give you the faith of Jesus. I want you to have faith in my son who came and gave his life for you to forgive you of the penalty of sin and separation from God. I want to love you. God wants us to be reconciled to him as sons and daughters of the living God through the blood of Christ. He wants us to accept Christ's gift and walk into eternal life so that his kingdom can come, so that his will can be done. And God's good and perfect will for us is to love others. Hey, will you love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and love others as yourself? If God is going to bless you, if God is going to give you all the food you need and put clothes on your back and give you every possible blessing that you could ever dream of, then he wants to know that you're not going to be selfish with the blessings that he's giving you, but instead that you're going to be a blessing to others. It's so simple. He wants to bless you. He wants to make you a blessing, but he can't be a just and good and loving God if he punishes the wicked and then you do the very things that the wicked are doing and then you're like, hey God, why aren't you blessing me? Friends, God can't do that. That wouldn't even be fair. Lynn Rydell says, Israel's kings continued down worse and worse. Judah's kings didn't do right and did not do the same. Oh, and, and, um, Oh, uh, let me see. Judah's kings didn't do right, but did not do the same abominations like Israel until Manasseh and Amen. Okay. Anyway, uh, you're you're absolutely right. So so you guys all the way through um, to First Kings chapter seventeen, we see like one faithful king. Everybody else is wicked. Everybody else is following in the ways of. The previous kings, Jeroboam and so on and so forth, Solomon, who turned from God, who ended up being influenced by the women of the other lands to worship the idols and to put up altars to these idols and to do sacrifice. Total wicked and evil. Uh, child sacrifices. I mean, you name it. All kinds of crazy things going on. And then, finally, Elijah comes. And it says, Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said, to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, depart from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the book, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Can you believe this? He has the courage to go and speak to the king, tell him that there's going to be a drought on the land, and until I speak and say that the drought is leaving... There is going to be a drought punishing the people of Israel because of the wicked that they are doing. God takes Elijah, hides him by a river, and literally has birds bring him food and causes the brook Cherith to continue to provide him water so that he will live. Listen, friends, if God asks you to speak a word in due season, he will sustain you, he will protect you, he will give you the courage and the strength to speak that word, he will feed you, he will take care of you. God is not going to fail you. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah because eventually the brook Cherith dried up because there was no rain in the land. The word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. I love this story because he goes to the widow in Zarephath, right? And she doesn't, have, she doesn't even have any food left. And Elijah says to her, Hey, you know what? If you'll take the little bit of flour and oil that you have left and you'll make me something to eat, God's going to bless you. God's going to make sure that you have enough. And what happens? This widow at Zarephath starts making the prophet food. And every time she goes back to the, the, the flour and every time she goes back to the oil flask, there's more flour. There's more oil. God does a miracle. And as she gives what little that she has to the prophet of God, God makes her little more. Friends, if we will just give our lives to God and quit making excuses as to why we cannot preach the gospel of the kingdom and all the world has witnessed all the nations, if we will just be faithful, if we will speak the things that God is asking us to speak, if we will do the things that his law is requiring us to do, if we'll just surrender so that the Holy Spirit can be poured out in our life to empower us to stand on the word of God and to live according to his law and to his word, friends, if we'll just give ourselves what God is literally saying to us is, is, listen, if you'll give your little to the Lord, you say, oh, but God, I don't have anything to offer you. Oh, but God, I don't have anything to offer you. I'm not good enough. I can't do it, right? 
if you will just give your little bit to the Lord, if you will just give your little bit to the Lord, then God will take that little and make it much. If you'll give your little bit, if you'll surrender what little you have, God is going to give us more. God is going to take that little bit and he's going to expand it. He's going to make it stretch to do what he's called you to do. God never asks us to do anything that he can't empower us to do. God never sends us on a mission that he can't fund. God never asks us to give what we have if he doesn't plan on providing for our needs. Friends, if we will just trust him, if we'll give him ourselves, if we will surrender to God, even though we know that we're weak and we're broken and we're sinful and we're all, oh no, God, I can't do it. I can't speak. I don't have these gifts. I don't have these talents. I can't preach. No, 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 no. Give your little to the Lord and God will take your little and make it much. God's going to take your little and make it enough. God's going to take your little and cause that little to overflow and he's going to bless you and make you a blessing to others. And you know what happens? The widow's son dies. Not only does God bless them with enough food to keep them alive, but it, when the widow's son dies, Elijah prays for the widow's son. Three times he lays over him and prays for him. And the boy is risen from the dead. And the woman says to Elijah in 1 Kings 17, verse 24, And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Friends, let me just say something to you. If we will truly surrender our lives to God and be filled with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, if we will truly ask the Lord to write his law of love on our hearts and our minds, and we will quit worshiping the idols of the kingdoms of this world, and we will quit compromising with the devil, and we will quit giving the enemy a foothold in our life, we are going to do the works that Jesus did in greater works than these. We are going to see miracles happen. And the greatest of these, the greatest miracle that we will witness is God using us to, so that Jesus Christ can be revealed through us to others so that by people coming to him and putting faith in him that they can pass from death into eternal life. The greatest thing that we can ever see is someone come to Jesus and give their life to him because when they do, when we come to Jesus, when we surrender to him, when we repent and we say, Lord, I want you, and we get baptized, we pass from death into eternal life. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the old life of sin has passed away. Behold, the Lord who created you in the first place by the Holy Spirit has made all things brand new. This is an amazing thing. It's an encouraging thing. It's an exciting thing. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. If we'll just give our lives to Jesus, he's going to take what little we have to offer him and make it everything that he requires. He's going to do the works through us that Jesus did and greater works than these. We're going to be used to preach the gospel of the kingdom into all the world as a witness to all the nations and Jesus is coming again. I'm so excited about it. Okay. Let's go to our New Testament reading, um, Acts chapter 10. Here we see a story of Peter and Cornelius. Peter ends up having this vision. And in the vision, God shows him this sheet. And, and on the sheet is all of these unclean animals. And um, Peter says, hey, listen, God, I'm not going to eat that. And this vision comes to Peter like three times, right? And the voice came to him a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happens three times in his dream. So a sheet of animals comes down. Peter here is having a vision where he's seen all of these unclean meats. And God's saying, go and kill and eat. What God is trying to tell Peter is, hey, look. If I've come into someone's life, if someone's received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter if they're a Jew or not. Now they belong to me. The old life which they used to live is gone. And, and, and so what he's essentially telling Peter is, is, listen, don't call something common that I've made clean. Don't call these people that are not Jewish commoners. Do not view them anymore as being people that are outside of my love and my grace because Jesus came to die and he, he brought salvation first to the Jews. But then he, 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 he did that in order to bring salvation to the Gentiles. Okay. And so in this story, it says, And while Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you that are coming from Cornelius' house. 
Rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. This is Acts chapter 10, verse 21. I am the one that you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. Okay, so essentially, Cornelius is now saying, you know what? I want, I'm going to send for this guy, I mean, Peter, even though he's a Jew, and I'm going to ask him to come to my house because the Lord has told me that Peter, that Peter is going to come and preach the gospel and I'm going to listen to whatever he has to say. Naomi, you make a great point. Peter had formerly denied Jesus three times. Friends, we all make mistakes. But look, now Peter's getting the vision. Now God is taking Peter to Cornelius, a centurion, somebody who is not even a Jew. And, and, and Peter's going to go to his house, even though normally a Jew would never go to this man's house. A, 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 a Jew would never go to anyone's house that's living outside of his nation because the people outside of the nation are considered commoners. They're considered idol worshipers. They're considered wicked people without hope of salvation. So, so this is totally crazy because Jesus is essentially saying, hey, Peter, because I died, there is no unclean. There is no commoner. There is, there is nobody outside. Anyone who hears the gospel and believes, anyone who hears the gospel and believes is going to end up coming to me. And Naomi, you make a great point. First, Peter denies God three times. And then Jesus gives him the vision three times, telling him, hey, Peter, it's time for you now to go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So um, Cornelius invited them to be his guests. The next day he arose and went away with them. And some, oh, no, I'm sorry. Peter invites the men who came to him to be his guests. The next day, Peter goes to their house. And let's go ahead and skip to Acts chapter 10, verse 34. It says, so Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Friends, anyone who has faith in Jesus is acceptable to God. Do you understand what Peter's saying? So he says in verse 36, Acts chapter 10, verse 36, As for the word that he has sent to Israel preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and of the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And what happens? Peter preaches the gospel. The Holy Spirit falls on the household of Cornelius. And all of the household of Cornelius is baptized and begins to follow the Lord. Friends, I just got to tell you something. If we will open our Bibles and we will read the Holy Word of God and we will allow the Holy Spirit to anoint our hearts and minds to believe on Jesus Christ, then in believing on Him, we have passed from death into eternal life. Friends, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life for all who believe on Him. And when we believe in Him, He fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit and uses us to preach the gospel of the kingdom into all the world as a witness to all the nations. Even Peter, who denied Jesus three times, was given three visions and then used to go to Cornelius and to begin the work of preaching to the Gentiles. And when he preached and when they repented and when they were baptized, in fact, before they were baptized, while he was preaching the word, the Holy Spirit fell on everyone in Cornelius' house. And Peter says, hey, look at this. They have been now baptized by the Holy Spirit of God. Who can deny water that they may be baptized? Friends, we deny people baptism a lot. People who have had the Holy Spirit fall on them. Don't get me started on this topic. Because of our own religious traditions, we often refuse to baptize people who have been impressed by the Lord Jesus Christ to repent of their sin. The Holy Spirit has fallen on them. How can we keep denying these people baptism? That's all I'm going to say about that.
All right. Psalm 133. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. Isn't that where we're at? Let me see. Yep, Psalm 133, 1 through 3. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For the Lord has commanded the blessing, live life forevermore. For the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. So it's like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Friends, Jesus literally promised us eternal life before time even began. Don't believe me? Look it up in Titus. Titus chapter 1 verse 2, I think it is. First Titus chapter, or uh, yeah, Titus chapter 1 verse 2. God who cannot lie promised us eternal life before time began. Look it up. Psalm 134, 1, 2, and 3. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by, the, by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. All right, let's go ahead and um, I see all of you saying what your favorite verse was. I'm glad that you're doing that. I just read them all because there was only three verses in both. Um, okay, uh, Proverbs 17, 7 through 11. This was my favorite one. Uh, Proverbs seventeen eleven. An evil man seeks only rebellion, and a cruel messenger will be sent against him. Let's look at verse 10. A rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. Friends, when we share the word of the Lord with somebody who has understanding, somebody who wants to know the Lord, that's going to do them a lot more. You know, giving somebody a rebuke that actually wants to become a better person is going to do a lot more for that wise person than a fool if you give him 100 blows for not doing the right thing. Right? And so we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to change our hearts, to open our minds, and make us willing to follow him and make us willing to spend time daily in his word and to say, Lord, will you write your law of love on my heart? Will you cause me like David, who is the psalmist, and Solomon, who wrote the Proverbs? Will you cause us to love your law and your wisdom? Will, will you cause us to love your word? Uh, Stone Doctor, we're almost ready to wrap up, my bro, but I'm glad to see you again. Um, this video will be available shortly for you to watch it if you're interested in watching Bible in the Year Day 166. 167, we did 164, 165 this morning. We just did 166, 167. Friends, this has been Bible in a Year, Day 166, 167. We've gotten four days done today. I made it at 7 o'clock in the morning. I made it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. God is helping me to be faithful. Please keep on praying for me. Lynn Rydell says, The message I saw for day 167 was that all are precious and important and equal in God's sight. Amen and amen and amen. Keep praying for me that God will continue to wake me up in the morning to continue to do the readings, to get caught up on the Bible in a Year Challenge. I'm going to keep pushing forward. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep praising God, even though I'm going through hardships and heartbreaks and all kinds of things in my own life. You know what? We're going to focus on the Word of the Lord. We're going to put our heart in God's hands. We're going to praise His holy name. We're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to keep our commitment to the Lord. We're going to do this Bible in a Year Reading Challenge. We're going to get caught up. Uh, right now, I should be on day 184. Pretty soon, I'm going to be actually caught up to the day that I'm supposed to be on, okay? So please, keep praying for me. Keep cheering me on. I'm cheering all of you on, all of you that are caught up, all of you that are behind. Let's keep on moving forward. Let's keep on reading our Bible every day. Let's keep praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And let's see God move in our lives, do miracles in our lives. Let's watch as God blesses us and makes us a blessing to others. God bless all of you. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this Bible in a Year reading challenge. Thank you for this Bible in a Year community. Thank you for giving me the strength and the courage to preach your word no matter what's happening in my personal life. I want to praise you for that. Your love makes it possible for us to share your word no matter what's happening. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. 
we have eternal life, and in that we have hope that if we'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all of the things that you've put on our heart to desire will be added unto us. We want to praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you one and all. I love you. Please keep praying for me. Life is tough. Pastor Forrest going through it. But I got my eyes on Jesus. And so I know that I'm going to persevere all the way through to the end. Thank you for praying for me. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful day. Amen, amen, and amen.